In today's video, we are covering some exciting news from CRISPR Therapeutics. In case you are new here, at HealthSwells we want to help you become a better investor by better understanding the science behind the companies you might want to invest in. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. As you can see here, on November 16th, CRISPR Therapeutics announced a partnership with ViaSight in order to start a clinical trial on the first gene-edited cell replacement therapy for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. In terms of prevalence of diabetes and type 1 diabetes in particular, the 2020 National Diabetes Statistics Report from the CDC provides insights, at least for the U.S. population. This table indicates the overall diabetes rate in the U.S. as 34.1 million in the general population. And here the incidence rate of type 1 diabetes per 100,000 population. You follow the black dotted line and you can see that it is just about 20 patients per 100,000 population, though the trend seems to be slightly increasing over time. The World Health Organization also provides statistics on the worldwide population of uh, diabetes patients. And if we scroll down to see what they have to uh, say about type 1 diabetes, we see here that type 1 diabetes in 2017 indicates worldwide there were about 9 million people who suffered from this disease, mainly in high-income countries. So let's quickly cover what is insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is excreted by the pancreas, a gland behind the stomach, and insulin is needed in order for the glucose that's circulating in your bloodstream, ultimately the blood sugar, to be used by the cells as energy. Think of insulin as the trucks that take the blood sugar and dump it into the cells. It is easy to imagine that insulin plays a quite vital role in the human body in terms of managing the flow of energy that the cells need in order to do their daily tasks. So, armed with this background information about diabetes, let's dive into the press release published by CRISPR Therapeutics and ViaSight together. As you can see here, CRISPR, of course, is a biopharmaceutical company focused on developing transformative gene-based medicines for serious diseases, and Viasite, a very formidable partner, is a clinical stage regenerative medicine company developing novel cell replacement ther therapies to address diseases with significant unmet needs. Furthermore, they have announced that Health Canada have approved the company's clinical trial application for the clinical trial VCTX210, which is an allogeneic gene-edited immune-invasive stem cell-derived therapy for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. Being the first into the clinic with a gene-edited immune-invasive cell therapy to treat patients with type 1 diabetes is breaking new ground as it sets the path to potentially broadening the treatable population by eliminating the need for immunosuppression with implanted cell therapies is the quote from uh, Michael Young, who is the president and chief executive officer of ViaSight. And here are some more details they provide on their phase one clinical trial, VCTX210. Of course, as any phase one clinical trial, of course, the purpose is to assess the safety toler and tolerability, um, as well as the immune evasion in this case for patients who suffer from uh, type one diabetes. The clinical trial program VCTX210 is an allogeneic, gene-edited stem cell-derived uh, product developed by applying the CRISPR therapeutics gene editing technology to uh, ViaSight's proprietary stem cell capabilities, and this has the potential to enable beta cell replacement, and beta cells are ultimately the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin, um, and therefore may deliver a durable benefit to patients without requiring concomitant immune suppression. And again, immune suppression is mentioned here because for any other uh, cell replacement therapies, of course, if those are allogeneic, meaning not to the patient's own cells, then they would be subject to be attacked by the patient's own immune system, 
because they're recognized as foreign. And here, this is uh, not required according to the company. So then let's get familiar with VIA site and head over to their website. You can see prominently displayed that they are working on regenerating health and specifically one of the key programs they are working on is transforming the lives of patients with insulin requiring diabetes. Well, that's type 1 diabetes predominantly. And you can see here they do this through a delivering novel stem cell derived replacement therapies as a functional cure for all type 1 diabetes and also a next generation treatment for insulin requiring type 2 diabetes. The uh, proprietary technology that they actually have is that they are working with uh, pluripotent stem cell based uh, technologies. So first of all, what is a pluripotent stem cell you may ask? You may have heard about embryonic stem cells and of course the ethical issues involved in working with those. Embryonic stem cells have the power and the potency to turn into any type of cell in the human body. And this is ultimately how, from the very first cell divisions, an entire human organism arises. Pluripotent stem cells are derived from more mature tissue types, and those cells are returned or retransformed into an earlier precursor cell that has then the ability, given the right conditions or the controlled conditions rather, to actually make up very specific tissues again as if they were in fact sort of similar to embryonic stem cells, however of course without the ethical implications. Turning a pluripotent stem cell into a specific desired cell type, such as beta cells capable of making human insulin, is no easy feat. And this is precisely where VIA site and their expertise working with pluripotent stem cells come in. It is well known in the medical literature that type 1 diabetes may be treated by donor island transplantation. Islet cells are derived, or uh, pancreatic cells ultimately, that can be obtained mainly from cadaver uh, tissue. And patients who are treated in this way, however, of course require lifelong immunosuppression because these cells obviously did not derive from the patient's own body and are therefore subject to the immune defense of the patient. However, these cadaver islet cells are definitely capable of making the uh, needed insulin, so ultimately this can be considered a successful treatment. And as we have just discussed, type 1 diabetes and diabetes in general affects millions of people around the globe, so it is easy to imagine that having a treatment that is based on cadaver tissues is definitely not going to be a viable option for the masses because simply there aren't enough cadaver tissues to go around. And this is another huge advantage working with pluripotent stem cells because those can be expanded, meaning multiplied, almost without limitations and therefore can be a viable source for cells to be implanted into patients and as such uh, impact their ability to lead a normal life. And this is why Viasite believe that their breakthrough technology and cell replacement product candidates are able to address the limitations of donor island transplantations and therefore constitute a major advantage in the treatment of diabetes. Again, clearly, the ability to treat millions of people with a stem cell replacement therapy hinges on the ability to expand and multiply these cells in large quantities. And we see this again here at the VSite uh, website that they have developed an understanding of the precise signaling that is needed for pluripotent stem cells to undergo self renewal, meaning multiplying these cells without triggering them to actually change and transform into the more specialized cell types that ultimately stem cells generally have the tendency to do. In addition to that though, Viasite's expertise also expands beyond working with uh, just the stem cells and also includes aspects of medical device engineering. And their medical device engineering ultimately is aimed at uh, making these stem cells immunoevasive. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease because the patient's own immune system has attacked the beta cells in the pancreas and destroyed them. Therefore, the patient's body can no longer produce insulin. 
and as such it is absolutely vital that any cell replacement therapies such as the stem cell uh, therapies we are working on must also be able to evade meaning not being recognized or seen by the patient's own immune system for the treatment to be effective VSIDE are employing different means to render their stem cell replacement therapies immunoevasive. This is on the one hand through their medical devices, which we'll look at next, such as here their PEC NCAP and PEC QT, but also through the way of uh, genetically engineering the stem cells to make them not being recognized as foreign ultimately by the patient's body. And this is where CRISPR therapeutics come in. VSIDE's medical device engineering centers around novel technologies for implanting and protecting cell replacement therapies. So ultimately you can think of uh, these medical devices as, well, pouches ultimately, kind of shown here, which contain the uh, specialized cells in the pouch. The difference between the different uh, types of medical devices is whether they ultimately allow uh, immune protector cells and other cells to uh, vascularize or not. These medical devices come in two different sizes used for clinical trials. The larger size is designed for determining the therapeutic dose of cells, meaning how many cells are ultimately needed in order, in this case for instance, to produce enough insulin for the patient to live without insulin uh, injections. And the smaller size, they call it a sentinel, is a uh, form factor with less cells, obviously, and can be used to evaluate the safety and implant viability. The advantage of these uh, pouch-type medical devices is that they can be actually removed uh, when needed in order to histologically uh, see the progression of engraftment and the maturation of these uh, pluripotent stem cells into the types of cells that basically form islet cells, including the beta cells that produce insulin in the patient's body. So, you might be wondering then, how are these cells inside these medical devices are actually surviving? How do they get their nutrients? And how can they do then the task they're being asked to do, that is to produce insulin? Well, the answer is diffusion. If you think of the example here with the tea bag, you can think of the cells inside of the tea bag as the leaves of the tea. Water and ultimately glucose can diffuse through the bag into the tea or into the tea leaves. And if we think that the insulin being produced by the medical device and the cells can diffuse out, well, you can see that here in this uh, illustration by the black color from the tea actually diffusing out of the tea bag. So here we are at the Health Canada clinical trial database and we can clearly see the uh, study uh, by CRISPR therapeutics in the database, uh, VCTX210. And this is an open label first in human study for the evaluating the safety and tolerability of the uh, combination product in subjects with type 1 diabetes mellitus. Uh, so far, no further details are really given here. The trial status uh, is still listed as pending. And uh, yeah, as the announcement by CRISPR and Viasite basically stated is that they hope to uh, get approval or to enroll the first patients uh, by the end of the year. So then, why does this additional clinical program really matter in the context of CRISPR therapeutics' pipeline? We look here and we can see we have already covered the uh, CTX001, which is a treatment for uh, beta thalassemia as well as sickle cell disease. If you have seen my previous videos on this, I leave a link in the description to those below. You already know that these types of diseases are so-called orphan diseases or the medications intended to treat these populations with relatively few patients are called orphan drugs. And there are certain challenges, um, of course, linked to that because the development costs are very high and only few patients actually require the treatment. Then they have immuno-oncology. Also, these programs are in the clinical uh, trial phase, 
patient numbers here certainly are going to be higher. But as we have seen here for the regenerative medicine, and this is the only program uh, aimed at regenerative medicine approaches, is now really for the treatment of uh, insulin dependency, type 1 diabetes. And yeah, we have seen the patient population that can potentially benefit from this is huge, ranging in the millions. So the complete opposite spectrum of, for instance, beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease in the orphan spectrum. And I think this is a fantastic position for CRISPR therapeutics to be in. On the one hand, benefiting from the um, regulatory protections uh, allowed for uh, developers of so-called orphan drugs and on the other hand, really having a disease program where the total addressable market is in the millions. That way, CRISPR Therapeutics, as well as their partners, can really benefit and hopefully see a, a huge market potential and ultimately are able to earn a lot of money from being able to uh, distribute these treatments to the millions of patients suffering from type 1 diabetes. So then if you consider that in their third quarter 2021 financial results, they still have about two and a half billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents in the bank. And at the same time, the company is only rated at uh, six billion uh, market capitalization. Well, then the overall stock price, if we look uh, year to date, is actually looking really, really interesting at now even less than $80 uh, a share. Really is uh, buying territory in my opinion, considering the fantastic clinical programs, the diversity, the width of their clinical programs is really impressive. And as they are moving aggressively forward, of course, they're gonna burn up some cash, but I think they have really more than enough to uh, advance these clinical programs quite significantly. Well, I hope you learned something useful and interesting about the new program by CRISPR Therapeutics. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. I hope to see you in my next video.